this video we will see management of a post rk surgery as you can notice there are multiple very very deep cuts which have even got fibros and scarred so we start by identifying an area where there is maximum amount of space between two adjacent cuts once we have identified that particular area i rotate the microscope and have that area in my field of surgery once i've done so now we do a conjunctival and a tenons removal we do this to ensure that the incision and the port is going to be through the sclera so that we have approximately 1.5 mm at least 1.5 mm of tissue between the entry uh, and the limbal outer limbal margin of the cornea we proceed by doing a cauterization one point of caution do not over cauterize because this can lead to delayed healing and also sometimes scleral melt so always you can err on the side of slight under cautery but do not over cautery we repeat a similar thing for the area of side port now the tip here is that again i would advise uh, you to do a outer limbus entry of the side port but if you do not remove the conjunctiva in this situation you can have a ballooning of the conjunctiva especially if you go a little outer limbus or a scleral incision so once i have exposed the conjunctiva in this area now you will notice we have no ballooning <clears throat> we now before we make our incision it is a good idea to inflate the anterior chamber approximately 1.75 mm from the limbus we make a linear 60% or 70% depth of scleral cut using a crescent knife we enter into the stroma of the cornea approximately 1 mm now this complete tunnel length approximately is going to be 3 mm this gives enough of tensile strength before we enter with a sharp keratome we do side to side movements to make sure that we have not created another linear cut this side to side movement ensures that we enter through the same port the same is repeated when we do the needle capsular access before entry into the anterior chamber we take the needle side to side before we enter the anterior chamber otherwise sometimes we can cause a desmans detachment one point to look for is try creating a little larger rexis because this will make the job easier for us so and we can actually do the removal of the cataract into the anterior chamber sometimes this reduces the maneuvers into the anterior chamber and also puts less strain onto the previous given rk cuts ensuring a good amount of rotation will do a lot of effort saving during the surgical procedure <coughs> now we go with bevel downwards phaco tip bevel downwards again to ensure that there is no desmans detachment you can very very frequently have desmans detachment in these cases another small tip is to reduce the bottle height by approximately 10 cm to whatever you are used to since this is a case of high myopia you will notice that the chamber has suddenly gone very deep and also the ballooning of the fluid behind the iris makes the pupil go small the reason why we keep the bottle height lower is because we don't want actually any extra pressure onto the incisions of the rk so that they may open up we will again use the d flip technique described by us in all other previous videos to reduce the surgical time reduce the effort of chopping within the bag and less strain onto the cuts given in the cornea again the use of a d flip technique in this soft cataract has been of a huge advantage to us we go and remove the second d segment by flipping it into the anterior chamber and as you see that in a matter of within couple of minutes the surgery is over now we use the irrigation aspiration again but if you notice we have supported the scleral lip before insertion of this ia port because again the edge of the sleeve while entering can get caught and can cause a desmans detachment so these few steps can, are to be noticed and uh, be careful about that we could do a good amount of decent surgery but we may induce a desmans detachment Uh, while going in or coming out of the main wound now we just proceed to insert the iol and most often that i use uh, hydro insertion of an iol we use the same here 
very low amount of bottle height, making sure that the aisle opens up slightly before I put it into the bag. Least amount of pressure onto the cornea and the incisions. So few points always to remember in such a case is the least amount of pressure in the anterior chamber and least amount of pressure on the sides of your wounds will ensure that your corneal incisions do not open up. Now having done so, we proceed to very carefully hydrate our wounds. No amount of overhydration is advised in these cases. If you overhydrate, sometimes your incisions can open up even while hydration. Next is doing cauterization. We will share the trick of cauterization of such wounds. What I do is I make the field wet first and slightly dry it with a cotton swab. And then once this adequately moderately wet, when the pitch or the field is moderately wet, pull the tissue which has to be cauterized together. Here we will notice that there is a slight touch contact point between the forceps. So the amount of effect of cautery is not completely seen. We again proceed to finish the cauterization, this time making sure that the forcep two edges do not touch one another, but they are only touching each other through the conjunctival tissue. Now this gives us a complete beautiful cautery and the surgery is over. Thank you.